Welcome to Rad Quarters. Today we'll be talking about ultrasound of the most common ovarian malignancy known as ovarian serous cystadenocarcinoma. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and this episode is sponsored by Samsung Ultrasound. The vivid images you're about to see were obtained on an RS-85 Prestige ultrasound unit. Let's take a look at some images and I'll review key teaching points throughout. So this was a patient in her 50s presenting with a clinical suspicion of ovarian mass. And we're starting with a transabdominal view here showing a very large right adnexal mass. It's primarily cystic, anechoic, and simple fluid here. But then we do have this solid appearing area at the dependent aspect, which is heterogeneously echogenic. So the question is, is this just debris or retractile clot, or is it actually solid tumor? So the way to evaluate that is to use color Doppler imaging. Now we're looking at a transvaginal image, and we do see some areas of color Doppler flow within this solid appearing projection. And that's confirmed with the addition of spectral Doppler here, and now we actually see a low resistance arterial waveform confirming a solid component of this cystic mass. Now when we look at this mass on real-time imaging, we can better characterize that solid appearing papillary projection there, as well as these other peripheral areas of solid nodularity. But notice that we see even more solid papillary projections as we scroll through the lesion. And as we go further back, we can see that there are multiple greater than four small papillary projections. So that's why it's important to evaluate the entirety of these cystic appearing unilocular lesions for papillary projections. Because if we use the ORAD system, which is the Ovarian Adnexal Reporting and Data System, we can further stratify these lesions. So this is a standardized classification and risk stratification system for ovarian adnexal lesions. And according to ORAD's version 2022, a unilocular cystic mass, meaning one locule, that has four or more papillary projections is consistent with an ORAD's five lesion, which is high risk of malignancy greater than 50%. If this had less than four projections, it would be an ORAD's four which is still suspicious but lower risk. So again, important to comprehensively evaluate the mass. And according to ORADS, the definition of a papillary projection is a soft tissue component measuring three millimeters or greater in height and surrounded by fluid on all three sides. And at surgery, this turned out to be a serious cystadenocarcinoma. So this is the most common ovarian malignancy and it's the most common ovarian epithelial tumor. This is divided up into both high-grade and low-grade types, and the peak incidence is between the 6th and 7th decades of life. On ultrasound, they tend to appear as a mixed cystic and solid mass with these papillary projections, as we characteristically saw in this case. There may also be thick septations. And this is different than a serous cystadenoma, which is a benign unilocular tumor that should have no papillary projections. These patients often have an elevated blood test known as CA125. That's seen in greater than 90% of patients. So that can be a, a helpful adjunct. All right, let's move on to another example. So here we're looking at the left ovary, and we see a cystic mass that has some simple anechoic components, but also appears bilocular. And we see a papillary projection here. And what else do we notice? Well, there's some wall thickening here, as well as irregular septal thickening dividing the lesion into two locules. So let's again evaluate for flow. And here on color Doppler imaging, we see that there is marked internal vascular flow. Let's confirm that again with spectral Doppler imaging. Here we notice that there's a venous waveform. And then also we see another low resistance arterial waveform, systolic, diastolic. So we do have confirmed blood flow. And let's use ORADS again to stratify this lesion. So this would be a bilocular cyst that has a solid component and also has a color score of three to four. So that's consistent with an ORADS-5, similar to the prior case, even though the morphology is somewhat different, again, with a 50% or more risk of malignancy. And according to ORADS, the color score is as follows. If there's no flow, that's scored as one. If there's minimal flow, that's two. Moderate would be three and very strong is four. So this would be kind of moderate to very strong flow. And so this was a left ovarian mass. It was actually the same patient as we saw earlier who had a right ovarian mass. And that highlights another point that serous cystadenocarcinoma can be bilateral. So these serous tumors, whether benign or malignant, are more commonly bilateral than other ovarian tumor types. This patient also had a CT scan showing that large right mass there with the papillary projection and the smaller left mass that's bilocular with the irregular septal thickening. Notice how we can see that neural nodularity, the papillary projection, better on ultrasound. So just to take a step back, let's review the broad categories of ovarian neoplasm. So there are four main categories. Epithelial, as in this case, is the most common, and that's followed by germ cell, which is the second most common. Then we have sex cord stromal tumors and then metastatic lesions. And if we dial in on epithelial ovarian neoplasms, these are actually thought to originate outside the ovary within the fallopian tube or endometrium and involve the ovary secondarily. 
And the major subtypes of this neoplasm are serous, most common, followed by mucinous, endometrioid, clear cell, and Brenner tumors. And serous and mucinous tumors can be benign or malignant. Endometrioid and clear cell are typically malignant, and Brenner tumors are benign. Now, if we look at epithelial tumors, most of these will actually be benign, 60%. And those, again, will usually be serous cystadenomas with mucinous cystadenomas less common. This was actually a combined seromucinous cystadenoma, a large tumor here. We can see these low-level echoes corresponding to the mucin content. These tumors will tend to be unilocular, the benign tumors. When they are septated, they'll have thin septations. So this one did have a few thin septations, but also a thin wall and no solid component. Now, 40% of epithelial tumors will be malignant or borderline. Borderline are tumors that have low malignant potential. And a distinctive feature of these tumors is the presence of the papillary projection, as we saw in our case. Also, there's greater likelihood of having irregular wall thickening or thickened septations. Here we have some irregular thick septations, some irregular wall thickening. They can also present as a large soft tissue mass with necrosis. Once the malignancy spreads, then the presence of peritoneal implants, pelvic wall invasion, or adenopathy become more common, and ascites may also be seen. Okay, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you found this educational. Thank you to our sponsor, Samsung Ultrasound. If you like this lecture, a great way to support us is to subscribe to the video podcast on Apple or Spotify, or by clicking the YouTube subscribe button. Reviews are always greatly appreciated. To see bonus teaching materials posted throughout the week, follow us on social media, links in the show notes, or click the YouTube community tab. Until next time, radiology is life.